Hello and welcome to the Mike Less Farmhand Mike YouTube channel, bringing you some of the biggest and best variety and definitely the most versatile farming content on social media today. You can find me on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at Farmhand Mike. Hey everyone, it is the end of August and I am down here in South Texas and they are picking cotton. Check this out. First off, before we get out there and watch this cotton picker in action, let's take a close-up look at what a cotton plant looks like right before harvest. The farm that I'm at here is near Beasley, Texas, which is sort of southwest of Houston, Texas. In the field running here is a Case International 635 Module Express cotton picker. This machine here picks the cotton, it also blows the cotton back there and builds a module on the machine. Once the module is fully built, he will go to the end of the field, he will back up, the back end will come down, and the module will slide out the back. And I got video of all that, we're going to get to see this whole thing in action. The farm told me this is a 2017 model here, and this is the last year that Case International built this machine. Now I did go to their website, they still show it on their website, or a brochure of it I found on the internet. But that's what they're telling me. This machine is powered with a six-cylinder Iveco engine, 400 horsepower. This machine has a three-stage hydrostatic transmission and a top road speed of 24.1 mile per hour. Of course, this is a six-row machine here. You can get this in narrow row or wide row, so 30-inch or 40-inch. A lot of cotton in my travel that I see is grown on 40-inch row spacings. This machine weighs in somewhere just shy of 24,000 pounds. This machine is at the end of the field and now has a full-size module in it, so he's going to drive it over here, go around that little turn you see right there, and eject the module from the machine. I had a pretty good day down here in Texas in a five-mile vicinity of here. I got to film four different cotton harvester operations, so I filmed this machine first, then I was out with a Case International basket picker, then a John Deere basket picker. Both those farms were actually building the module on the ground, so I do have future videos coming there. And then after that, I was out with a John Deere picker baler machine. When the cotton module is ejected on the ground here, they will come out, they will tarp them, and then when it's time for them to go to the cotton gin, a truck will come out with a live floor back under this and haul that cotton module to the gin. Cotton does like hot temperatures, that's why it's grown in the south, but this year it's been extremely dry down here, so the cotton yields are not what they're used to, but some cotton look better than others, and they had a fairly decent crop here at this farm. If you want to get right down to it, this cotton module, the way this is set up and built here and ejects it, is a lot like the Heston stack hand making a stack of hay. I did a couple cotton harvest videos two years ago out in Oklahoma. That area uses cotton strippers, so you will see cotton pickers and cotton strippers, and I'm told it just kind of depends on the area which machine they use. This area here does use the cotton pickers, and of course John Deere has the picker baler or the stripper baler, and ever since they come out with that, that's pretty well dominated the cotton harvester market, and that's why I don't believe any other company builds these anymore. At one time, even Alice Chalmers was in the cotton harvester market. I still see quite a few of them out in Oklahoma, and there's still a few guys using them, so maybe someday I'll get to catch one of those in action for a future YouTube video. But you can see what's going on here. That back tailgate's kind of folding down. That has a live floor. The bed's tipping up, and he's going to eject that module right there on the ground beside the other one. And this was perfect timing on my part. If I would have been an hour later, this guy would have been completely done with his 2023 cotton harvest, and I would have had to wait till next year to catch this machine in action. I do not claim to be an expert on cotton, but I do know all my years of traveling past cotton fields, it seems like there's always just a little bit that's still left on the plant or some that falls on the ground. So I guess in this business, there's just an acceptable loss and there's not much you can do about it. And if you're watching this video and you're in the cotton business and you want to care to add a little more to that, what's an acceptable loss and what's not, please add that in the comment section. I'd sure enjoy learning a little more.
that's going to do it for this video. If you did like this video, please go down there and hit that like button. Feel free to comment below. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, I would really appreciate it if you'd go down there and hit that subscribe button. Now, I am going to have a few more cotton harvest videos from this area coming in the near future, but I will mix those in with other stuff as we go forward. And if you want to see more of what I'm doing, you can follow me along on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Farmhand Mike. As always, thank you for watching and supporting my social media.